Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about how these guys work. All right, so here it says P equals 800, R equals 6%, T equals nine years, compounded quarterly. I guess we need a formula, don't we? Okay, so they don't pretty much do this anymore. Pretty much everything is compounded continuously, and actually that's easier than what we're gonna do here. And we'll get to some problems like that here as well. But let me write the formula down. Let me break down what everything is. I can actually get something that writes. That would be cool. OK, so here's our formula. So this guy here, this is money you had then. And what I mean by that, this is the money that you put into your account back in the day. OK, this guy here. This is money now. This is how much is in there as we speak. OK, one is pretty self-explanatory. It's one, right? Then we're adding a number to it. OK, the number we're adding to it, the R. That is your. Percentage of increase, right? So the percentage on the account per year. OK, here's the big thing to remember. This is got to be. The interest rate. I don't know why I always gives you a hard time at the top of the screen. But it does. So the interest rate. Here's the key part. Has a decimal. Because if you don't use a decimal, you're going to get weirdness for your answers. OK, so kind of a big deal there. Decimal, OK. And then this N is how many times a year we compound. So basically the number of times we compound is the number of times we calculate interest in a year's time. So number of compounding in per year. All right. And T is time in years. OK, so that's everybody. So now we're just going to plug it into the formula and I'll, I'll give you some handy dandy tricks to uh, do this on your calculator and get the right answer and not have to do too many maneuvers. OK. All right. So in this case, they tell us. P is 800, so that means they put 800 bucks in the bank. So we are looking for. The amount of the in the account, so that's money now, so that's going to be a. So A is going to equal 800. OK, plus one over R. Now we said R has to be. A decimal. So 6% is really six. Think percent is like a cent is like a penny. And there's 100 pennies in a dollar, right? So it's percent is per. 100. That's the way you remember that. So if you plug it in your calculator, 6 divided by 100 is 0 0.06. So that guy's going to go here. OK, so now over N. N is the number of times that we come, we calculate interest in a year's time. OK, so this says compounded quarterly. So how many times a year is that going to happen? If we compound quarterly. So think of it this way. How many quarters is there in a dollar? You guys awake? Yeah, thank you. 
So quarterly means that the end value in this thing equals four. So that means over four. And then NT is, again, the four, the number of times that we compound, times the number of years. And they tell you T is nine. So that's going to be times nine. All right. Charlie must be having computer problems again. OK, so the best way to do these guys is to work from the inside out. All right. So let's start here with this. I'll bring up the calculator here. See, we were having all kinds of fun in the last class. All right, so we've got, let's move over this way. 0.6 divided by 4. Oh, that's 0.06, not 0.6. My bad, I was going to say that doesn't look right. Try that again, 0.06, there we go, divided by 4. That's more like it, so 0 0.015. Then we're going to take that and add 1. So we're working from the inside out. All right. So we did this part here that we put in the highlight. Then we add 1. That gives me 1.015. Now we raise that to a power. I probably put that in the most inconvenient place possible. So we do it four times a year and they want to know how long we've done it after nine years, which means we've compounded it four times a year times nine years, that's 36 times. So we're going to take this number, raise it to the 36 power. Boom, 1.7, blah, blah, blah. All right, so then everything in the parentheses and then raised to the power gives us 1.79. Then you take that times the 800. So in the account now, to the nearest penny, we have... Oops. Oh, what the heck? 1367, and I forget what the pennies were. 31 and 31 cents. Alrighty. So Einstein, you might have heard of this, Caddy. He was he was a pretty smart dude. Not the best hairstylist in the world, but that's okay. Anyway. Einstein came up with this, what he called the rule of 72. OK. And what that was, and it's pretty darn accurate, got to say. Is he said if you had. An account. That made 6% a year. In 12 years. You would double your money. Well, notice here we're talking nine years, right? But it's well on its way to Dublin because double that would be 1600 and we're already at 1367. So conversely, if you had an account that was really rocking it and was making 12% a year, you would double your money in six years because six times 12 is 72. As is 12 times six. Pretty cool. So 9% you would supposedly get it in eight years. So that was his rule of 72. Pretty accurate. Not far off at all. So kind of a good rule of thumb. All right, questions on what we did here. We'll do a few more, so if it's a little hazy, it's OK. So the key to this is the calculation. Start in the middle, then add the one, then raise it to a power, then multiply by this guy. That seems to be the easiest way to get your answer without a whole lot of keystrokes on the calculator A and also getting the correct answer, which is B. All right, let's continue on. All right, so this is pretty much second verse, same as the first. So let's go ahead and write our formula down again. So a equals P and then one plus 
R over N raised to the N times T power. All right, so again, we are looking for the amount in the account. All right, so that's the A value. So A is going to equal P, which they tell us is 3750. Okay. And then times one plus 3.5%. So that's going to be 0 0.035. All right. Compounded monthly. Well, we know there's 12 months in a year. So that means our N value in this case is going to be 12. So then this guy is over 12. Okay. And then finally, we're going to compound our interest 12 times a year and do that over 20 years. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started with the middle here. So we'll start with this guy, right? So we got our calculator here. And we say we've got it. And if you weren't sure about the percentage, just do 3.5 divided by 100. There's your percentage, 0.35. Then we're going to divide that by 12. So this will give us a pretty small number. There it is. Add one. Now, we're doing this 12 times a year, and there's 20 years, right? So then we're going to raise that to, and if you don't know what 20 times 12 is, that's okay. You could do this. We raise that to the, use parentheses, 20 times 12 power. So that's the 240th power. Boom. So we've got 2.011, and then we're going to take that times the money we had originally, which was 37.50. So now we have, whoops, still in highlighter mode. Let's get out of it this time. All right. And I forgot what we had. So 74, no, 75.43.88. 75. 43.88. Okay. So we've about doubled our money. Remember the Einstein thing. 3.5 times 20 is 70. Rule 72 says we should have about doubled our money, and we did. So the rule's a little bit off here, but it's still pretty solid. Because it'd say, okay, we should have about doubled our money, which would have been 7,500. And we get 7,543. Cool. Questions on that one? <clears throat> you okay, Billy? Okay, I don't know. I thought maybe you're feeling bad today and you didn't want to answer the questions, which I mean, that's cool if it is. All right. So let's check out a couple more. Yeah, I'm tired today too. And I got a long day. I got three tutoring appointments after work, so. I won't be getting home till about, I don't know, 6.30. Okay, so here's another one. Same thing, let's go ahead and put our formula up here. It's a lot easier to remember these formulas once they make sense to you. And Charlie's back. Okay, so same thing. They want to know the amount in the account. That would be A. So we're going to do A equals P. They tell us what P is. That's 2,400. 
and then times one plus our interest rate is 5.25. So again, if we want to know what that is as a decimal, we just take 5.25. Yeah, it's been ugly. This is actually the best mine's behaved all week. And that ain't saying much. Because it was giving me shizzle this morning. Is it is it cussing if you say it in another language? I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> So 5.25 and then divide by 100. OK, so 0 0.0525. So that's going to be this guy. So 0 0.0525. And then compounded semi-annually. Semi-annually, that's not a real apparent one, but the way that means is the end value is 2. So semi-annually means twice a year. This is just the kind of crap you got to pick up from when we do this stuff. So that's going to be a two there. And then they want to know how much we've got in 12 years. Okay, so this is going to be two times 12 years. So if we do it twice a year and we've got 12 years going, that's 24. OK, so let's crunch. Again, start from the inside, work your way out. Start with this guy. When we're doing our crunching. All right, so we do him. So we got 0 0.0525. We divide him by two. Gives me that guy. Then it says add one. OK, so that takes care of the stuff in the parentheses. Then we're going to raise it to a power. The power in this case is we're compounding twice a year. Over 12 years, that means we're going to do it 24 times. So we raise this to the 24th power. So 1.86. OK, so all that stuff equals 1.86. Then finally, we just multiply it by the number out front. So that's times 2400. So we've got 4469.79. In highlighter form. <laughs> Although the sixes and the nines don't turn out very well. Here, let me doctor those up a little bit. Much better. You got 50? Hmm. So that's the thing. We got to take these guys and work from the inside out. So we did. We got to do parentheses first, right? So we do this guy here, right? Then we add the one, and that takes care of the stuff in the parentheses. Then we do exponents, which this guy here is going to be 24. And that'll give us everything except the guy up front, and then we multiply by him last. So give it another try. I can run through it again too. So I've got 0.525. I divide that by 2. Gives me that. Add 1. Gives me that. I'll raise it to a power. A power this time is 24. Gives me that. And times 24. OK. So yeah, I think I think we're pretty good here with that one. So you missed us. We were talking about Einstein had something called the rule of 72. Which was if you have an account that makes 6% interest, you'll have about double your money in 12 years. And 6 times 12 is 72. So it's saying if you have an account that's really uh, working good for you and you're making 12% a year in six years, you should double your money. So 12 times 6, 72. So the reason I bring that up here is we've got 5.25% times 12 years. That's 60 and then 0.25 times 12 is another three. That's 63. 
So it's a little less than 72. So this is a little less than double. Because if you doubled it, you'd have 4,800. Well, we've got almost 4,700. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. If you found some place that's giving you 5%, man, let me know. <laughs> well, but, you know, they, they go hand in hand. Yeah, the interest rates at banks are bad. You're right. But the interest rates to buy a house are really low. I mean, way back before you two showed up, I bought my first house. The fixed rate on this house was 10 10.5%, 10.5%. What is it now, like four, maybe three, depending on who your bank is and how good a credit you got, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you got 12 cents? Yeah, that's about right. So, yeah, I know that they don't give you much now, but and then in, in like in, the, in like the 1970s. The interest rate on a house was like 20 percent, 20 percent. That's like buying a freaking house with a credit card. That's just insane. Because seriously, I mean, I used to use this. Um, I used to teach a class called Financial Algebra up in Ohio. They don't have it down here. I don't even know if they have it up there anymore, to be honest. But it was actually practical stuff. It was stuff you could actually use. You know how people always say, when am I going to use this math? You're not. <laughs> There's stuff you actually could use. But we talked about like, credit cards and financing houses and stuff like that. And I used an example where I said, okay, so a buddy of mine had a Discover card. He owed about 15 grand on it, okay? And Discover's notorious for giving you like a huge credit line that you can run up, okay? So anyway, he owed about 15 grand on this thing. And they have to put this on here now by law. So he showed me the statement and it said on the statement, it goes, if you make your minimum payment, you will have this card paid off in blank number of years or months or whatever, right? Care to take a guess how long it was going to be till that card was paid off? How many years you think? You're about half right, Charlie. But even at 50 years, let's face it, if you are, you know, an adult, chances of you even being here in 50 years are not that good. So as it turned out, your grandparents don't believe in credit cards. They're smart. Okay. As it turned out, it said, if you make the minimum payment on this card, you'll have it paid off in 102 years. AKA, this card is never going away. Ever. And you know what his minimum payment was at that time? It was over 400 bucks a month. That's a car payment. That's a nice car payment. <laughs> you know, that's like a car payment for, you know, I don't know. A, a lower price challenger or something like that. One without the Hemi. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. Matter of fact, when I used to talk about credit cards, I found this little cartoon. It was great. It had... A credit card and the credit card of course was red and it had horns and a tail yeah credit cards are satan <laughs> and debt is really a form of slavery people i'm telling you that right now being in debt is just, it's the worst and i've been there i've been there so my buddy i finally convinced him he went to one of those um like debt reduction type places that you see advertised on TV and stuff like that. And they did good for him. He actually got out from under it in like four years, which beats the snot out of 102. So careful about that stuff. 
uh, I give you another example. Um, when you go to college, they'll have some kind of event going on. Well, eventually they'll have some kind of event going on. You don't have to worry about, you know, giving cooties to your neighbor. When we were little kids, I never thought cooties was going to be the thing that we we're going to be the most scared of. But here you go. <laughs> anyway, so they'll have these events and there'll be a booth set up. It's like, oh, sign up for this credit card and get a free T-shirt. That's the most expensive free T-shirt you'll ever get. Because you know what happens to most people? They get that credit card, they get their free T-shirt. And when they get out of college, they've got $10,000 worth of pizza and beer. Not good, people. Not good. On top of all your college loans, you got an extra 10 grand that you have to deal with or whatever. But I mean, an exorbitant amount of money, to say the least. So occasionally we do have life lessons here in Algebra 2. All right, so let's see. Maybe let, let's let's maybe do one more and we'll call it. For today. All right, so this one says compounded daily. All right. So we'll just say if it's compounded daily, we'll assume it's not a leap year. And we'll say N equals 365. Okay. Of course, 2021 is not a leap year, so that works. Good for you, man. Good for you. You can't start saving too early. Because then you might actually have a chance of retiring. Most people these days will never be able to retire, myself included. All right, so let's go ahead and use our formula again. So again, we've got A equals P in parentheses one plus R over N times N and T. All right, so let's plug in our numbers. So A is gonna be, P is 1500. Right. And we've got one plus our interest rate is 4.5%. Turn that into a decimal. It's going to be 0 0.045. And in this case, is 365. Okay. So that means up here, this is going to be 365 times three. This is where you're real glad you have a calculator. Okay. Because I don't know what that is. It's over a thousand. I know that much, but that's about all I know. So let's figure out that part just to start off. So 365 times three, 1095. So then this number here is going to be 1095. This ought to be a hoot. All right, so again, start with your guy here in the middle. All right, so we break out our calculator and we say 0 0.045 divided by 365 gives you a real small number. Matter of fact, it went into scientific notation on this one. <laughs> then we add one. So 1.00012, blah, blah, blah. Okay. But now we're going to raise that to the 1095th power. Boom. Didn't make that much difference, did it? 1.14. So then we take that times the 1500. And we've got 17, 16, 79. So 17, 16, 79. I keep forgetting I'm in highlighter mode, but that's okay. Okay. 
So it went up some. Not a lot, but it went up some. But again, the Einstein rule is 72. 4.5 times 3 is going to be what? 12, 13 and a half. Not really close to 72, is it? So that's why it's only gone up a little bit. All right. OK, so that's probably a good stopping point for today. We'll get to some that do continuous compounding here in a little bit. You'll find out that's actually easier than what we've been doing here. And we'll talk about that. And we'll talk about how that relates to the the uh, natural base E that we were talking about a couple days back and that stuff. OK. OK, well, I'd like to thank you two for showing up as always. Tomorrow's Thursday already. Last day of class for you guys. All right, so I'll go ahead and power down the recording and uh, call it a day. So once again, I thank you guys for stopping by and hopefully we'll see you tomorrow.